hopes to meet North Korean leader Kim Jong-un for a fourth time before US President Donald Trump visits Seoul at the end of the month. Touting his positive relationship with Kim Jong-un, President Trump reiterates he's in no rush to make a deal with North Korea on its denuclearization. However, he says sanctions will stay in the meantime. Plus, chaos in Hong Kong, protests turn violent and scores are left injured as islanders lash out against an extradition bill that would allow criminal suspects to be sent to mainland China for trial. Our top story this morning. President Moon Jae-in is calling for the resumption of talks between the two Koreas and between the North and the United States. Speaking at the Oslo Forum on Wednesday during his week-long tour of Northern Europe, President Moon said President Trump and Kim Jong-un should meet sooner rather than later to resolve their differences over the regime's denuclearization. Our Shin Se-min reports from Oslo. Taking to the stage at the Oslo Forum on Wednesday, President Moon Jae-in said he hopes to meet North Korean leader Kim Jong-un for a fourth time before the end of June. President Moon's push for another summit this month is seen as his bid to narrow the gap between the leaders of North Korea and the U.S. before holding another round of high-stakes nuclear talks. His remarks come amid rising anticipation for a much-needed breakthrough after the North Korean leader sent a personal letter to President Trump this week. The South Korean leader said the letter is a proof that numerous channels of dialogue between Pyongyang and Washington remain open. But at the same time, President Moon expressed concern about the prolonged absence of face-to-face -face talks. <laughs> 나는 김정은 위원장과 또 트럼프 대통령에게 조속한 만남을 촉구하고 있습니다. The South Korean leader also introduced his vision of peace for people, promising his utmost efforts to resolve the issues that many Koreans face simply because of the divided peninsula. 만년설이 녹아 대양으로 흘러가도 서로를 이해하며 반목의 마음을 녹일 때 한반도의 평화도 대양에 with President Moon Jae-in putting the onus on North Korea's Kim Jong-un to speed up the dialogue momentum, eyes are now on Pyongyang to see whether any moves will be made in the remaining weeks of this month before the G20 summit in Japan and the diplomacy-heavy week that comes with it. Shin Se-min, Arirang News, Oslo. Now, exactly one year after U.S. President Donald Trump sat down face-to-face -face with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un in Singapore for their first ever summit, Trump stressed on Wednesday that he's in no rush to push the denuclearization issue. He says Washington will do well with Pyongyang in time. Kim Hyo-sun with the details. On the one-year anniversary of the historic Singapore summit between the leaders of North Korea and the U.S., President Trump reiterated on Wednesday that he will not rush to make a deal with the North. Answering questions during a joint press conference with Poland's president at the White House, Trump said Pyongyang and Washington are going to do very well. He also mentioned the sanctions are still in place. I think we're going to do very well with North Korea over a period of time. I'm in no rush. The sanctions are on. He hailed the letter he received a day earlier from the North's leader, saying he appreciated very much. Trump also stressed that things have changed dramatically, saying tensions were very high between Pyongyang and Washington when he became president. He explained he has a good relationship with Kim Jong-un and looks forward to seeing how things unfold. We started off a very rough relationship, and I think we have a very good relationship right now. So we'll see what happens. I'm in no rush. I'm in no rush. 
Using the opportunity to highlight the achievements his administration has made so far, President Trump explained that the remains of American soldiers who fought in the Korean War are coming home, and the regime hasn't conducted any nuclear tests for well over a year. Kim Hyo-san, Arirang News. Now, the U.S. State Department says it's ready and willing to engage with North Korea on a working level. At a press briefing on Wednesday, the department's spokesperson, Morgan Ortegas, said the U.S. wants to make progress towards the promises it made with North Korea at the Singapore summit a year ago. She added the U.S. is looking forward to building a bright economic future for North Korea, but sanctions will remain in effect in the run-up to that. She didn't confirm whether talks are currently taking place between the two sides. Now, the United States and a number of its allies are accusing North Korea of breaching the UN sanctions cap on refined petroleum between ships at sea. Lee Sung Jae with the details. According to reports by Reuters and Bloomberg, the United States and dozens of its allies, including South Korea, have called for tighter measures on North Korea after issuing a complaint that the North conducted 79 illegal deliveries of refined petroleum this year and have breached the UN's annual cap of 500,000 barrels. The U.S.-led complaint to the U.N. Security Council, which was dated Tuesday, calls for restrictions on the North's refined petroleum imports, saying it's critical in maintaining pressure on the regime, including those parties responsible for its WMD program. The North Korean mission to the UN did not immediately respond to a request for comment. While the U.S. complaint does not specifically name who it believes is supplying the fuel, former U.S. Ambassador to the UN Nikki Haley previously accused Russia in September last year of cheating UN sanctions on North Korea. Moscow strongly rejected the accusations. However, Reuters reports Russian tankers have supplied fuel to North Korea by transferring cargoes at sea. Meanwhile, U.S. Special Representative for North Korea Stephen Began has been spotted in New York City. As it was reported, he met with the 15 members of the U.N. Security Council behind closed doors on Wednesday. While not a member of the Security Council, the representative of South Korea to the U.N. Cho tae was reportedly present since it involved Korean Peninsula affairs. Lee Seung Jae, Arirang News. Now, U.S. President Donald Trump says he's confident Washington can reach a trade deal with China amid stalled talks between the world's two economic superpowers during a press conference with his Polish counterpart at the White House on Wednesday. Trump stressed numerous times that additional tariffs will be imposed on Chinese goods if the two countries fail to reach an agreement. He threatened Beijing with additional tariffs worth more than 300 billion U.S. dollars, but added he has no deadline in mind. Turning now to the latest on the tragic sinking of a tourist boat in Budapest, and authorities in Hungary recovered one more body on Wednesday evening, which could belong to one of the missing passengers. Kim Mogion reports. For the first time since the sunken Habliani was lifted out of the Danube River, an additional body has been recovered. Police retrieved the body on Wednesday evening local time. Presumed to be of an Asian person, the body was discovered some 110 kilometers south of the accident site near the Belska area. The identity of the victim is yet to be confirmed, but if the body turns out to be one of the missing passengers, the death toll will rise to 25 with three still missing. Meanwhile, the hunt for the missing continues. On Wednesday, a government rescue team from South Korea was expected to conduct search operations inside the boat, but they were stopped by Hungarian authorities due to unfinished legal procedures regarding the preservation of the boat. The Korean team was later granted permission to search inside from Thursday morning local time. The Hungarian police began their search inside the vessel on Wednesday, but they have just announced that they were not able to find any additional bodies inside the wreck. In the meantime, the two sides are continuing their search along the Danube. The highest probability is that the bodies fell out of the ship during the crash. So if the bodies are not inside the ship, then they must be in the water somewhere. On the whole territory of the river, the Hungarian police is doing a huge job. 
everyone is out on the water searching. The Minister of Interior yesterday doubled these forces, and so the chance to find these bodies has grown. Meanwhile, a Hungarian court has turned down a prosecutor's appeal against this decision to release on bail the Ukrainian captain of the cruise ship that slammed into the side of the tour boat, causing it to sink. The captain, who has only been identified as 64-year-old Yuri C., was arrested earlier this month, but the court decided to release him on the condition on bail of 53,000 U.S. dollars. The court ordered him to undergo police questioning twice a week and to wear an electronic tracking device so he cannot leave Budapest city boundaries. Kim Mogyan, Adirang News. Now, we start our world news with the protests in Hong Kong against a controversial bill on extradition. Developments are coming thick and fast as tens of thousands of angry demonstrators hit the streets again on Wednesday to protest against it. For more on this and other news from around the world, let's turn to our Hong Yu. Uh, this is turning more and more serious by the day. Give us the latest details. Well, what started off as a peaceful demonstration ended up in clashes between riot police and protesters on Wednesday afternoon. Thousands of opponents of Hong Kong's new extradition bill that will allow suspects to be sent to mainland China for trial surrounded the city's government headquarters. Today, the Hong Kong people want to tell the Hong Kong government that on the 9th of June, we had more than one million people coming out on the street and we can't give up simply because the government ignored our demand, because this is our home. We only want to penalize the legislative council, so please don't rush in, don't get beaten, and don't let others make excuses for you, okay? Protesters blocked access to the area with barricades, and when they refused to back down, riot police started using force to push them back. Police were seen using batons, rubber bullets and tear gas on demonstrators who were seen throwing water bottles and rocks at police. It was some of the worst violence in Hong Kong since the island was handed back to China by the British in 1997. At least 72 people were injured, including two classes serious, according to the Hong Kong Hospital Authority. Despite the outpouring of opposition, Hong Kong Chief Executive Carrie Lam looks set to plow ahead with the bill. I will not shy away from my responsibility in introducing a piece of legislation, uh, though I, we are very convinced of the justifications that causing this uh, uh, public uh, outcry and all these uh, divisiveness in society. But sometimes, as a political leader, you cannot shy away from difficult decisions. Lam acknowledged the public outcry but said it was necessary to close legal loopholes. An easy calm is being observed in the early hours of Thursday as Hong Kong is bracing for possible further clashes. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe arrived in Iran on Wednesday for a two-day trip, becoming the first Japanese leader to visit since the 1979 Islamic Revolution. Citing high-level Iranian officials, Reuters reported Tehran would ask Tokyo to mediate between Iran and the U.S. amid tensions over Washington's oil sanctions on the country. The Iranian government, however, made it clear that Abe's visit was planned in advance and will be a crucial opportunity to build friendly ties between the two countries. The visit is crucial for Japan as the country imports nearly all of its oil, mostly from the Middle East and must tread a fine line as it doesn't want to anger Washington, its strongest ally and security partner. The number of deaths from influenza has increased rapidly this year in Brazil. According to the Brazilian Health Ministry, there were 222 registered cases of deaths from influenza through May 25th. More than half were caused by a new type of influenza, H1N1. The total number of deaths is lower than the 335 seen over the same period last year. But deaths due to H1N1 have increased by 10 percent so far this year. Most patients were reported in Sao Paulo. H1N1 was, the, was first reported in Mexico in 2009 and has continued to spread widely since then. Flying taxis are no longer the thing of science fiction. They are now science fact. 
as Uber has announced a plan to launch the futuristic service in three cities by 2023. The ride-sharing company's vision for the flying taxi will be a quiet electric-powered aircraft that transports commuters between skyports on top of buildings. Uber says the aircraft would initially be flown by a commercial pilot, but would eventually become autonomous. The service will launch initially in Melbourne, Dallas and Los Angeles, with test flights expected to begin next year. Time now for our Life and Info segment where we focus on information useful for your everyday life. Today, we are going to talk about some upcoming summer festivals that will take place right here in South Korea. I'm very happy to say I'm joined in the studio by our Kan hyung to tell us more. So, festival time, hyung What have you got for us? Well, good morning, Mark. I have three festivals ready for us today. Uh, first up is the Poryong Mud Festival, which is one of South Korea's best loved summer festivals. So taking place at Daecheon Beach in Chungcheongnam-do province, this year's 22nd edition of the Mud Festival will begin on July 19th, a little over a month from now. Mm. The event offers a number of special experiences for visitors, ranging from mud slides and mud painting to mud runs and a mud mob scene. This year's festival will keep its mud experience zone open at night for the first time extending the hours of operation to 9 p.m. As the most popular, fe- most popular festival among foreigners in South Korea, the Poryong Mud Festival has organized a K-pop concert to spice up the event. The festival will run through July 28th, so there's still plenty of time left to get muddy and put some extra glow on your skin, as the mud is said to be good for your skin. Yeah, that's uh, what that beach is famous for. It's uh, the vitality the mud is supposed to give to your skin. Perhaps uh, if you go towards the start of the festival, the mud will be a little cleaner Cleaner, than if you go towards the end. And I believe you went there uh, last last year year and had a bit of fun with all the uh, adults having Mm -hmm. a nice time with a Mm -hmm. few uh, beers on the go. Uh, Tell us more about if you don't want to get uh, covered in mud. Uh, Tell us about some more of these festivals. So, uh, you know, as you just said, adults, uh, they, you know, they tend to have fun with drinks at this uh, Poryang Mud Festival. (laughs) But uh, if you are going there with your family, uh, there's a way for you to enjoy the festival without, you know, being interacted with the, with some drunkenness. You said there's a, a kid's zone aside from where the adults uh, mess around with the mud. So Mm -hmm. if you want to go with your family, with young children, there is a place for them as well. Yeah, they can enjoy it without, you know, being interrupted by the adults. Yeah. Okay, well, tell us more about this second festival then, Hyungu. So uh, let's stick with the beach settings. And I have the Busan Sea Festival, uh, which will take place from August 2nd to 6th at five beaches of the city of Busan, including Haeundae and Gwanganri. So launched in 1996 to promote the southeastern port city, Mm. the Busan Sea Festival offers, again, numerous hands-on activities, such as a night run, a dance party, and a water carnival that anyone can join. As you can see, they're having plenty of fun over there. Yeah. Uh, There's also a jazz concert, a DJ contest, and special performances by Korean artists. Uh, I actually went there to do a report last year and had a chance to talk to some of the festival goers. Let's take a listen to what they thought of the event. This beach is great. The festival is great. I'm enjoying it. I feel like I'm home. Yeah. This is my first day here in South Korea, and I'm enjoying it. I think it's fantastic. I've been here for four weeks now coming down to the beach. It's just wonderful the way it's all organized. And yeah, it's, it's great. I'm having a great time. Wow, so you went there as well last year. Yeah. You're Mr. Festival for uh, Arirang News, it seems. That seems like a bit of a, a nightlife kind of festival with lots of dance parties and mm-hmm. things going on at night. But there are also things to do during the day, during the period of that. Yeah, that. they have a jazz concert, a right. bit more peaceful than a like, DJ dance party. Right. And during the festival time, they have uh, different booths and hands-on activities that you can enjoy at the beach. So. 
Uh, if you don't, if you're not more of a nightlife person, you can enjoy Go in the, the day yeah. and then go somewhere else at night and it's spread over five different beaches. Mm -hmm. So if one of them's pretty overcrowded, then try one of the other beaches out. Yeah. So if you don't want to get a load of uh, sand in your shoes or you don't want to get caked in uh, uh, beer soaked mud, <laughs> perhaps at uh, the Boryong Mud Festival, tell us about your third and final uh, festival you're going to introduce to us today. Yes, uh, last but not least, well, I think you, Mark, are going to like this one. Oh, okay. It's the uh, Daegu Chimek Festival. In the word Chimek, Chi is, Chi is the abbreviation of the word chicken, with Mek standing for Mekju, which means beer in Korean. Okay, what are you trying to say there, Hyungi? So, it's, <laughs> it's basically... <laughs> So from July 17th, the Chicken and Beer Festival will kick off at the 1.6 square kilometer Turyu Park in the southeastern city of Daegu. No other details about the program have been released yet, but the event guide map shows four areas, uh, Chimek Club, Chimek Ice Pub, Chimek Market, and Chimek Live Park to satisfy the needs of beer and fried chicken lovers. The Chimek Festival began in 2013 and has been seeing the number of participants grow exponentially since then, topping one million visitors mark for the last three years. Wow. So everyone is welcome to join, but the beer is obviously limited to those who are legally of age, which is 19 in Korea. So make sure to bring your ID card if you want to enjoy both parts of the Chimek Festival. And you didn't go to that festival last year. Not yet. Well, I hope they send you this year and uh, you can enjoy uh, the festivities there. And I'm glad to uh, hear that you think I just sit around eating fried chicken and guzzling beer all day. I assure you, uh, I don't most days That's anyway. That's not the case. Uh, well, Hyungu, thank you very much for that. That was uh, very enlightening. And uh, we sure want to uh, check those festivals out if we have some time in mm -hmm. the summer. Thank you for coming in. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Now, it's that time of the week where we take a quick look at some other cultural events that are taking place across South Korea. Now, let's get some uh, local news now. The uh, Seoul Metropolitan Government's public art projects and its crime prevention designs have won International Design Awards. The Society for Experimental Graphic Design, which awards public design projects that have a positive social impact, they actually gave their top award for this year to Songdonggu District's Skyline Wayfinding Project. The Crime Prevention Project won the Sylvia Harris Award and Merit Award for adding addresses to the side of each building to help locate people in an emergency. A three-way pedestrian overpass in Jongno-gu District also received a Merit Award for its design that incorporates arts and augmented reality technology, which you're looking at there. Seoul's projects are the first Korean design projects to receive these design awards. Good morning. It will get hotter today with temperatures heading a couple degrees higher than Wednesday. In southern parts of the country, including Daejeon and Daegu, will need to brace for a very hot day with highs nearing 30 degrees Celsius this afternoon. So hats and sunglasses are a must today for proper skin and eye protection. The sun's rays can lead to nasty sunburn. Meanwhile, fine dust levels will be high in parts of the west through this afternoon and high concentrations of ozone which is toxic to people and plants are expected for most areas. Temperature-wise, the breezy morning is warming up fast. Seoul and Gyeongju will get up to 28 degrees Celsius this afternoon. 
A sunny and hot stretch of weather is set to continue for the time being for the capital area, while south and eastern regions will see showers for the next three days. That's Korea for you, and here's the international weather for viewers around the world. Well, that's all the news and weather we have for now on this Thursday morning here in Seoul. Stay tuned to Adidang TV. Uh, the usual reminder that our newscast uh, next one is coming up at noon Korea time. So until then, goodbye.